Red Lady, and today I'm going to be watching The Expanse Season 6, Episode 3. So quick recap before we actually get started, though. The last thing we saw for the Rosinante, they happened to come across the spotter ship and secured it, which had the access to the trajectories for all of the asteroids that Marco had in his arsenal. So that's no longer on the table, which is a good thing. And as for Drummer, she might actually have access to locations to the supply depot that Marco has stashed everywhere. That would be a crippling blow to his operation, because once you can't feed your people, things start going downhill from there. War of Attrition is always the longest option, but it may also be the best option in some cases. And as for Marco at the end there, he was totally aware that Sarah's station was going to be under attack by a possible Earth fleet, but he didn't seem too worried about that, and I want to know why. My guess is that he set some traps around the station, ready and willing to blow it up, since he can't have it, nobody else can. That's my thought about it, but it depends on if he's going to leave anyone behind. Another thing that I'm actually interested in is the beginning sequence for each one of the episodes we've seen so far. It was the little girl and the alien life that she happens to stumble across what exactly is going on there where is that going to lead to well hopefully we'll see some more in this episode anyway let's go ahead and get started and see what actually happens was it the creature that did it is that creature from the proto molecule ship or the the thing up there It looks a little different. You fixed her. What? <laughs> oh, what? It didn't fix. Oh, gee. What? I don't think it actually brought it back to life. I think what it did is it took the bird's body and it combined some of its own DNA and made another being that's like both because it made another copy of itself. So I'm thinking whatever it actually is isn't that animal the one that she calls it that looks like a dog but whatever it is probably took that dna spliced it with something else and made this creature you know and then it made another copy i'm thinking it started out as like goo or something like that and just took creatures and kept adding to its own you know dna book oh what happened is it her brother is she gonna have it fix her brother what happened to him? So what happened to this kid? It looks like he maybe fell from somewhere high because he's got a lot of blood on his head. So probably head wound. But also she's probably gonna voluntarily take her brother's body to the creature and it's gonna, thinking that it's gonna, you know, save him, but it won't. It's probably going to consume his body or combine with it and make a separate entity and split off several different copies of that. And it's gonna be a humanoid alien version of itself. Maybe it'll be able to talk though. And depending on the way things go, it'll probably go bad because we're always afraid of what we don't understand. Or we'll probably have another enemy out in space. Then again, it looks like this thing may reproduce by consuming things. So, I mean, it may be a devourer and, you know, devourer of worlds. That's never a good thing. It's like 50 bobbies running around right now. Seeing lots of gear stripped out. All right, heat signatures on level 12. I hate signatures. It's the people. Did he take his own people and leave and left the people of Sarah Station? If so, that's a kind of a dick move. Oh, are they just giving it up? I, I don't think so. Do you know who I am? Is there a belter who doesn't? <laughs> he didn't tell me where he was going or why, and I didn't ask. He knows the strategic value of this port. He would not have let us take control of the city. Yeah, seriously. Government disrupt his supply lines and establish a forward position in the belt with no resistance whatsoever. Unless he rigged this place to blow and he just didn't tell her or she knows and she's just not saying anything. In the words of Admiral Akbar, it's a trap. I chose to remain here to limit the damage your illegitimate occupation will do. If her words are true, she is stupid because it's going to blow up. I know it. At some point, it's like on a remote detonator or maybe it's on a timer or something. This place is going to blow and she's going to go with it. Sirius has no warships, no munitions, no functioning repair skips, no surplus fuel or rations. And at a current rate of consumption, only enough food and air for approximately three weeks. So like the kingdom manga, he basically turned his people into like locusts <laughs> to them. But I, I swear he's still going to blow this place up because maybe that was another reason why he took everything because he stripped a place so it wouldn't burn up. I'm telling you, because I don't think he he's not the kind of person who would go for the war of attrition. I think Officer Raleigh would, but I don't think he would. Oh, we, knew we needed this port to repair and refuel and stage for Jupiter and Saturn and he turned it into a trap. That's even worse than killing him now. 
Okay. If he were in this position, he wouldn't lift a finger to keep our people alive. This is his mess. And he made it ours. Exactly. If you can't do what he would do. Station, we will be the ones responsible for a massive humanitarian crisis. The belt will see us once again as the oppressor, and Inaro's power will continue to grow. Yep. Damn it, maybe he didn't set the place to blow. Because I didn't realize they would need that stronghold to be able to go further deeper into space to go after him. So so maybe he did just want the Sierra Station and Belters to turn into locusts for the Earthers, you know? Suck like them dry of all the resources. And But maybe he also did it, hoping that the Earthers would treat them badly so he could use that for his propaganda as well. Hmm. Smart. He looks so looks worn like out. Looks like they're sailing all the way to Ceres. You have the watch. Wait, what? I really need to get some sleep. I'm sorry to drift say. off in the chair. So as of now, you're in the rotation. Sweet. You know I wasn't in the Navy. No, I was only in it long enough to get thrown out. <laughs> All you gotta do is stay awake and keep an eye on things in case of emergency. Everybody on this ship has something they regret. That's true. Including Amos, I think. He does, probably. <laughs> you're in good company. I have the watch. Seriously, I love when the crew gets along like this. And I, at first I thought it was kind of weird that she would just, you know, come out and lay this on him before he was going to bed, but I'm glad she did to clear the air and make herself feel better too. Ah, so good. I also really love Clarissa's happy little smiles. <laughs> She's such a cinnamon roll. Anything other than noodles, bars, and brothels? I never looked. <laughs> I could totally see like Bobby and Amos becoming like bros. It'd be awesome. For a few seconds, I was back on the Bella, jumping off the Chetsamoka without an air bowl. You can't blame her. So it all makes sense now. I mean, that's what I thought it was, but I wasn't too sure. I came across a UNN surveillance video of the Barkeith leaving the ring space and asked Bobby if the UN had any record of similar incidents of ships that went missing after ring transits, and she came through, but there's a ton of data, and I could really use some help making sense of it. You're not trying to distract me by giving me an interesting problem. <laughs> Is it working? Yes. <laughs> I love the crew. Show me what you got. <laughs> okay, I love seeing the crew like this. This is the way they should be. The only bad thing is every time the entire crew is having happy moments together, that just means something bad is around the bend. Please tell me I'm wrong. Did you have a chance to look over my assessment of the Inner's fleet? I did. You don't seem concerned. Can't say that I am. Why? Three new UNN capital ships and two Martian Dunger class. That's more than we expected. Darn, they rebuilt their forces quickly. They will need them. Why isn't he concerned? Isn't to be happy about. <laughs> Why should I be sad? We will overcome it. But he's still not telling us how, though. Besides his people actually becoming locusts for the Earthers, I, I seriously think he's got other traps. He's got to. This is not the inner's kind of fight. We will hit and run and hit and run and be gone before they know what hit them. Wait a minute, have his successes kind of gone to his head, making him kind of blind to the fact that he's not infallible? Is is that what some of this is too? But I still think he has traps though. You told the people on cities that it was our new capital, that we would make it the pride of the belt. <sighs> And you feel that we abandoned them. So he does but care. Always part Good. of plan. We shipped the station, left them barely enough to we survive. We left the inners with a problem that they had to deal with, tied up their resources and weakened them. It's all about the other side to him, not about your people. At least Philip is starting to realize this now. I wonder if he's going to do anything about it though. What can he do? Maybe he can work with a blonde lady and try to overthrow his dad. That'd be cool. The Belters on series are not like us. Generation after generation, they've slaved away for the inners, accommodating their needs instead of fighting for ours, caring more for their own comforts than the future of the belt. So that makes him kind of like a belt or purist in a way, and that makes him even worse. I don't think Philip is gonna like this. Disaster first happens. Oh, she made the video. Together to help each other, it's a natural human instinct. No one should have to live the way we have. And maybe now they'll understand it. Understand what? That the belt poisoned the water and stopped them? that we killed the children the way that they kill us? What is the problem? And this is what she wanted, and it's happening. Nothing. I mean, it might only be a little bit that feels that way, like Michio here, but every little bit helps, and who knows? Someone who's behind an ignition key for 
torpedoes or whatever might think twice and that might end up being in the earth or favor this is saberhagen speaking also for the ghost captain drama we won golden bow now we fight with you yes Good. i'm ready for a fight because she needs allies right now the pastor has a knack for eliciting sympathy that's so true okay. she got it from amos and that's it's saying something better. Tell your marines to keep a close eye on her. She has a knack for causing trouble. Yes, <laughs> too true, too true. Okay, why did they do a close-up on her like that? Like something bad's gonna happen to her. What is it? So oh! Nante. Oh my god. Headed for cities. I knew there was too much happy time going on in the ship. Something bad was gonna happen. It had to be Marco. They are nearly within missile range. If we divert, it will delay. He wants them dead. It's just a frigate. They're no match for the Pella. Not even one on one, and we are three to one. They have a real gun. Yeah, and by the time they're close enough to use it, they will be dust. Weapons to my son. You can tell in his eyes he doesn't want to. See, it's like his successes are actually going to his head. He's not being careful about this at all. Of course, it's the Rosinante, and it probably is driving him to do it. But I just feel like mm, I just feel like this is a really bad call from him. This alloy is tough as shit. <laughs> Those are something made out of, anyway. It's made of Mars, honey buns. <laughs> honey buns. <laughs> Somebody's trying hard not to leave any tracks. Mm. Amos. <gasps> I hope this finds you well. Sorry, that was straight. That's the plot guy. That's your best friend. Right. I know you're in the middle of the war. For the past year, we've been working on ways to improve crop yields for food grown in the belt. Please, give this data to them. I think that's what Carbonidus was trying to do. Earth could use it now. Don't worry about me. Or May, so could those filters. I can take care of them. I miss you, my friend. Prax, you better not die, dude. I hope this helps. Well, this could help all Earth and the filters that you just took in from Sarah Station. So that's a freaking good thing. Prax came in clutch. Oh my god, that's amazing. He's got a whole new family now. There's nothing in this for him. He's just a good guy. That's what it always takes. If Prax thinks it's important, then it is. Mm-hmm. Chris, he'll know what to do with it. The old lady really loves it when you call her that. <laughs> At least I say it to her face. <laughs> is, is Bobby flirting with him? It's like a hole suddenly opens in the floor. And if someone falls in, they're gone. But then a minute later, the hole itself has gone and everything seems normal. Until another hole suddenly opens up somewhere else. And for the next minute, more people fall into that. Is it like normal? You think the Barkeith have to have those ships too? And I'm no expert on those things inside the ring. Me neither. I know nothing about science. Might be. Yeah, I'm a fantasy nerd. I don't know nothing about science. Although shows like this and the Honor Harrington series from David Weber makes me wish I was. Where's your M bed? God damn it. I'll be right back. What, was that? what the? What was that? So he took going to sacrifice the station. We didn't see them talking about it, so I'm pretty sure this was probably on like a timer or something. And he obviously didn't tell the other Sarah's Belter lady either, because she would, I don't think she would have ever agreed to this. So, damn. <laughs> oh, but wait a minute, the journalist lady also might have died and got blown out into space. And she had her camera on. Was it live feed? No, she said they would edit it out and post, right? So it wasn't a live feed. Because I was going to say they could have used that and possibly say like it was the Earthers who did this. Oh, wait a minute. They can still use it against the Earthers because it wasn't live. So they don't have anything to show that it wasn't the Earthers. Oh, damn. This, this sucks. Everybody Is wait it? for a hard spin. It's so cool. Planning. Oh, my God. Holden, you're, you're pretty amazing. Fuck. Four more torpedoes incoming. Where are you going? We gotta fix them. In the middle of the fight? That's the job, Peaches. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing bad better happen to them too while they're doing this. Come on, show, don't do that to me. I'm serious, show, don't you do it. Do you spin again, I'll take the shot. We're too far away. You're seeing a spin and evading before you can fire. Just give me the shot. Come on. Those clips are coming. Oh, yeah. 
freaking face, Marco and Bobby. Bobby needs to be a permanent part of the ship. And not only because she's a badass, but also because Holden needs help. He can't do everything on his own. I mean, the poor guy's already wearing himself thin. Holy shit, it worked. <laughs> they're down, but they're not out. Time to aim them. Hold your fire. What? Why? Marco's better as a prisoner than a martyr. Yeah, but he's never gonna surrender. They're not gonna be down for long. Our window's closing. If that Seriously. doesn't work, you fire. Is he doing this out of consideration for Naomi? But Naomi just said he's never gonna surrender. This is your only chance. Oh, she's not gonna do it. She's not gonna let it happen. Oh my God. And it's so much worse than she can actually see him. No matter how this goes down, it's not gonna end well. Because if they let them go, they could have had them. And if they kill him, they kill Naomi's kid. I mean, she's already got PTSD. This is gonna mess her up even more. Oh my God. Before I live at the end of your leash. Oh my God. Now he's got to choose. Pretty sure that was recognition in Holden's eyes. He knows that's Naomi's kid because he looks just like her. No, fuck it, we tried. Firing one. It wasn't Naomi. It was freaking Holden. Holden couldn't do it. But oh my God, Naomi was going to let it happen. She was going to let her kid die. That's amazing and also heartbreaking. God damn it, I'm done now. Yep, that's exactly what I thought. However, Bobby's gonna be so pissed off. You failed. You failed. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. You're questioning him in front of everybody. <clears throat> this is not gonna end well. This is your fault. We didn't need to be here. We didn't need to be in this fight. He's got oh, a point. God. We didn't nope. need to kill James Holden. That was your pride. That was you. Just you wanted to kill the man. You are relieved of duty. I love this. He's acting like a spoiled child and he's trying to put the blame on everybody else, but Phil finally ain't having it. I love it. He's losing it. He's letting personal vendettas rule him. Bossman, Medina Station is pleased to report that RSR G6 was just received at Laconia Ringgate. Operational testing will commence as soon as possible and we will, of course, keep you fully apprised. Laconia. Does this one perform as well as the others? It will be fun. What? What? So is that like a prototype ship or is that like a weapon or both? Uh, what is that? And it's heading to the planet with the little girl in the in the weird creature mess, right? Oh my god, what it what what it, what if the creature or whatever or whatever it is out in space or whatever what if it consumes whatever is on that ship or the ship itself? What happens then? I mean, they just opened up a world of possibilities here, but we only have two freaking episodes left. Please let somebody pick this up. But before we get into what actually happened in this episode, let's go to the x-ray because it has two of my favorite people and I want to see it. Okay, so it won't let me make it full screen, so it has to be played like this, which I think is weird, but whatever. Hi, it's Editor Me, and for some reason, the sound for the clip itself was really low compared to my voice, and there was no way for me to fix it. I tried, so sorry about that. Sure you want to do this, Mary Shaw? Because I don't play fight. Oh my god, yes. Okay. All right. Let's go over the rules first, just so we're both clear. All right. Well, first rule. No killing. Not... Oh. Oh! She was ready for you. Sleeper hold. Put him to sleep. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Come on, Amos. Come on, Amos. What is he doing? Oh, it's cheating! That's freaking cheating! <laughs> but use everything at your disposal. They're so cool together. <laughs> use her as a handheld. Oh! That's messed up. That's messed up. Oh my god, I want more of that. So yeah, that was great, man. I wish we had more of that. I want more of that. I could tap episodes of that. <laughs> Give them their own show. <laughs> but really though, we only have two episodes left and we don't know what's going on with Marco and his secret ship or weapon or whatever it is and what's happening on Laconia and 
they had Marco in their sights, but Holden couldn't do it because you know he saw Philip and all he saw was Naomi and he knows how much Naomi cares about her son. It's just uh, such a bad situation all the way around. But seriously though, Bobby needs to stay on the Royal Sonante. She needs to be a permanent crew member. And Sarah Station had to have been on a time detonation. And that's going to look really bad because they don't have any live footage or any footage possibly that they can access. It shows that it wasn't the Earther's fault. They're probably going to blame them for it. Things are going to blow up in, in Avastarella's face. It's going to be a horrible conclusion, probably, because it's going to be open-ended, because we're not going to have any more after this, after the next two episodes. But I really want to know what's going on with Laconia and the animal that's there, and what's going to happen once it, it happens to come in contact with whatever Marco is sending there. And I can't wait to see Drummer and her newly created fleet of Golden Bow ex-captains working on taking out the supply depots either because I can't wait to see Marco's face when that actually happens and he hears about it. It's going to be sweet. But I would really like to know what's actually going on in Laconia, like I said. And it's really sad we only have two episodes left. And I really wish, hope someone picks this up because I would like to see the rest of the story. I know this is based off of books and they're already done. They just recently refinished is what I heard. So I really would like to see the end of this entire series brought to life because they're doing such a great job with this show. I mean, it really shouldn't end. Anyway, this was great. I can't wait for the next episode. What about you?